Jesus, his name. Come on. Can you say Jesus, Jesus, his name shall be called. His name shall be called. Oh, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Christ, sweet Christ, Lord, I'll give him all the praise. Come on, raise your hands right now. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we call on the greatest power, the greatest teacher in this universe to arise and let your enemies be scattered. 
we call on the auspices of the Holy Spirit to be loosed in this place. You're the only real teacher. And he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Let God arise. Let God arise. Let the Holy Spirit arise. Anoint our ears to hear. Anoint our hearts to receive. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody help me say Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God. Oh, yes. Before you sit down, just tell somebody, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Oh, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Let God, let God arise. Save, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. thank God for his goodness and his mercy and we thank God for allowing us the extreme privilege and opportunity of being here with our friend and his very fine first lady Bishop T.D. Jakes and his very fine lady Lady Jakes and and all of the very fine bishops Bishop Merritt <clears throat> and Sister Merritt uh, from Michigan and some of the other fine uh, bishops here that, from Washington DC um, brother and sister Owens, uh, bishop in their own rights, and different ones. We thank God for all of his kindness and his mercy. And it's so good to see our brother <clears throat> uh, for, who has gone through much. But I thank God for all that our brother has done. He's victorious. I thank God for this brother. Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> brother Baker, and to all of the saints and God, I just love God for who he is. Thank God for witness and, and the different saints around. Sisters and brothers, we have a word from the Lord and we don't want to <clears throat> belabor you any longer than that is necessary. But I know that the media department at home, because we're a brand new church, we're 17 months old in the city of Southfield, they would probably just try to massacre me verbally about not announcing that there's tape ministry uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. There's a tape ministry. We brought some tapes and videos with us and I'm sure the designated place that Bishop 
and this very fine conference back to the Bible has designated they are there. Um, different ones like put on the, the fight, go show yourself to the priest and uh, you, have, you have to be blessed and um, uh, it's time for enlargement, the fifth shift, there's a place called hell and God blesses the struggler, missing the miraculous, so many more. Uh, they brought several to tell you the truth, bonbons, how to get out of bondage and all kinds of things. So I have three pages here, so if you will, right there, meet them in the designated area for the conference and um, I'm sure they'll be able to help you with whatever those needs are. Sisters and brothers, will you turn with me to the Word of God? <clears throat> How many have been enjoying the conference? How many of you coming back next year? <clears throat> God is good, isn't he? God has given this man a vision and uh, we need to thank God for him. Come on, can we say amen? Saints, uh, will you turn to Samuel and uh, go to the gospel according to St. Matthew? Samuel 3. First Samuel 3, the gospel according to St. Matthew 28. And uh, we're going to move sporadically in the scriptures and we don't want to belabor you. Um, but for those of you that do Bible study, we'll be coming also out of the book of Luke 24, Matthew 28, 16, 17, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4, Acts 1, 8. 2 Samuel 12, 1 through 14, Numbers 13, Numbers 14 will be coming, Revelations 12, 17, Isaiah 14 and 7, and you have to get the tape. Ah. Psalms 27, 14, Proverbs 3 and 6, Proverbs 3 and 5, is God not good? Isn't he good all the time? Shall we look at the gospel according to Matthew last? But uh, let's go to Samuel L, chapter 3. When you get there, say amen. amen. And chapter 2 and chapter 1 are background history for this text um, that we want to just pluck out of. But in chapter 1 in Samuel, you'll see Hannah who is bitter and burdened about being barren. Then you'll see in chapter 2, Hannah prayed. Say, and Hannah prayed. In chapter 3 is where we're going to read. Uh, will you look at verses 1 through 4? And let's read that. And we'll, we'll, we'll move you along as the Spirit of the Lord should lead. All right? If you haven't, say amen. Because you love God, do him good. Say amen. amen. Yes, come on. Let's read. Beginning with verse number 1, chapter 3. Shall we read it in concert together? And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim, that there that he could not see, and ere the Lamb of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me and he said I call thee not lie down again and he went and laid down verse 6 and the Lord called him yet again Samuel and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said here am I for thou didst call me and he answered I call thee not my son lie down again now Samuel did not yet know the Lord Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. 
And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went, lay down in his place, and the Lord came at the steward and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. That day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth. Because his sons make themselves vile and he restrained them not. Therefore I sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with a sacrifice nor an offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning, opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel my son and he answered here am I and he said what is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee I pray thee hide it not from me God do so to thee and more also if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he hath said unto thee and Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him and he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seemeth him good. The A clause of verse 19 is our situation text tonight. Will you say it with me? And Samuel grew, stop. And Samuel grew, stop. Say it again. And Samuel Say it again. And say it again. And look at somebody and say, and Samuel. Look at somebody else and tell them, and Samuel grew. Ah, you're going to get it in a minute. Look at somebody else and say, And Samuel grew. Uh -huh. ah. You'll understand it in a minute, but tell somebody, I'm so glad he grew. I'm so glad. I'm so glad, I'm so glad Samuel grew. Saints, uh, the Lord has spoken to my heart, and we're so glad that some of the saints from home have arrived here safely. They've been here for more than one day, and I'm sure they're going to be fat in the Word of God the time they get home. I was praying about this conference because I know that God has a mandate on this man and woman's life. And I have been hearing the spiritual thunder. And not only hearing the thunder of what's going on in the body of Christ, but there is a peal. Oftentimes when you hear the thunder, 
Do you listen to what God is really trying to say? How often has God repeated over and over again in his word, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There's no need to say that if we are hearing. More than ever because we are in the end of time. The crucial thing about the Spirit of God is, he says, in the last day. It would come a time where people would have a difficult time of hearing the Word. There would be people around the Word. There would be people carrying the Word. There were pe people who had several Bibles on their shelf. But the thing that denoted the end time would be that men would be lovers of themselves more than falling in a agape love with God. Sisters and brothers, 1990 Christendom we are cresting quickly into a move of God and you can see it all across the body of Christ can't you see God's thundering moving can't you see it happening and would you imagine that God has waited until this time and you and I have been divinely selected to be a part of the move somebody shout thank you Lord Come on, say, thank you, Jesus. He could have done it any other time, but he waited until now. The fullness of time. You'll see it over and over in the word of God. The fullness, the fullness, the fullness of time. In praying, I ask God because you would be here and this man has a great vision that the Lord has given him that we would not err. We prayed and fasted and prayed and fasted and asked God and didn't ask the intercessors because you leave here and go back to your station in the body where you have been set in the body as it pleases himself. And it is necessary when we leave this conference that we be the bettered for coming. Sisters and brothers, God spoke to my heart about something because there is a change of leadership happening in our day and time. The thunder is rolling. Men and women are being poised and positioned to leave here. Some are being called in early. Some are calling themselves in. And others God is going to get. We are in a unique time period. Because many are great warriors and great people of great power and they have great power with God the Bible says in the book of Isaiah or Isaiah however you say it says the righteous perisheth and none take it to heart when people of great spiritual stature move off the scene the righteous should stand in attention to hear what is going on what 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 is it what what are you saying what time is what sisters and brothers 
great men and women of great magnitude, this happening, that happening, this happening, that happening, this, that, this, that, the thunder is rolling. But is anybody listening to the peal? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say unto us, the right now church. It bothered me and I said, Lord, what's going on? What, what is this? What, what, what's going on? And I said, I'm listening. And you know how you can keep praying and God don't say nothing, so you go back. And you pray again and say, like, well, God, I know you're saying something, but I'm not getting it. And you forgive me for being stupid or being ignorant or slow to grasp. But tell me what's going on. What's the word? And the Lord talked to me about this passage of scripture. And I want you to walk with me there. Because this is not aloof from you, but this is us right now. Go with me. Go with me there. And you'll see what the Spirit has to say to us. The backdrop to the scene while we are here is first of all, we deal with the young man, uh, Eli. It's his turn now. He has the baton now. It's his turn to be the high priest. He has some sons by the name of Hophni and Phinehas. In his tenure of reign, he's done a wonderful job, but as the years became on growing, for some reason, he becomes lax. He becomes used to power and position and ends up becoming reckless with God. Sisters and brothers, the priesthood, the royal priesthood, the holy nation, the city that is set upon a hill that cannot be healed, the salt of the earth, and if she lose her favor, she is good for nothing but to be trotted under the foot of men. Well, here he is doing his daily work, doing his daily chores, and his sons are not being corrected. And here we walk, rushing in. Will you go with me now into the temple? And uh, we stand in the mix of the crowd. Go, go, go. Don't stay here. Go there. You can do it because you are born of the Spirit. You can see it right now, can't you? You can see it. We walk in and we're just going to bring your offering. Somebody get a lamb and somebody else a turtle dove and somebody a ram. But whatever, just bring an offering. You can't go there without an offering. When you get there, you'll find that the priests are ministering around the altar and uh, uh, they have servants, a part of the Levitical host, that start messing with the offerings hold on to your offering because they've got a thing about it here in this particular time period they would before you can get it to god like to destroy it and maim it and mess over it the men began to speak to the people in this particular time period and say, listen, what, 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 what? My, my master would have no sodden or no boiled meat. Uh, we will take the fat before you, you know, lift it or burn it before God. The fat belonged to the Lord in these offerings. But because Hophni and Phinehas have become vile in their moral statues in the house of God, then all of a sudden their servants went and, in other words, mutilated the offerings that the people would give to God before they could get them to God. And the people began to weep and cry and complain and say, well, at least offer my offering to God first and then you can have everything. And I have a problem with it. The backdrop to this is that they argued with them and said, either give the offering up or we will take it by force. We will wrestle you to the ground. We will beat you. We will snatch it. We will offer what we want to the Lord for you. 
The offering belonged to them and they were trying to get their sins remitted, trying to get things wiped out in their past. And this is this kind of a conference because we want to forget the past and move on into the future. They wanted their sins covered and they want the sins remitted, but saints of God, these men mutilated their offerings before the Lord. Go with us. When they went home, of course, the saints began to cry out to God. And as they cried out to God, God always, as he will faithfully do, he'll listen to the prayers of the saints. And then after judging and weighing them, after a time, he'll send an answer. You don't have to worry about being suppressed or oppressed. God has an answer for oppression and suppression. Saints, all you have to do is pray because God will answer our prayers. God promised in his word that he would answer us even before we called. The saints are weeping and crying and it looks like there's nobody answering and no, no answer coming from God. Have you ever prayed and, and it looked like God won't hurry up and answer? And so you tack on a fast with the prayer and it's still like things are getting worse than getting better. Have you ever prayed for days in a row about the same situation because you're eaten up with the zeal of the matter and your heart has become heavy and it still like, looks like it's getting worse instead of getting better? Uh, am I the only one that's ever done that? Have you felt that way before? Well, saints, these people keep praying, but it looks like there's no answer coming. Looks like God is ignoring them. Job had that same problem and it looks like God is ignoring you right in the midst of your affliction, right in the midst of your hurt, right in the midst of the heart of your pain. They weren't feeling justified. They weren't feeling like their sins were remitted. They weren't feeling like their offering had reached God. So they'd come back and give another offering hoping that God got that one. Uh -huh, you know how that is. Sisters and brothers, by the time this kept going on. It just didn't go on for months. This went on for years and years and the people began to cry. And when you look at the situation, God was making an answer, but he was making an answer through an accessory prayer. Because when things are necessary in the spiritual realm to be answered on the earth, what God will do is he will put it on the heart of an individual to intercede concerning that one thing so that heaven can have an answer coming in the air. Heaven has to hook up with somebody here in the earth so an answer can be birthed to deliver us all. Reach over and tell somebody, thank God for intercessors. Hmm. Uh, ask somebody next to you, are you an intercessor? Uh, wait on their response. God bless the intercessor. Oftentimes what happens here is that many times when we're going through stuff and things and mixed up situations and sometimes we're just praying and asking God to do some things for us, we don't know how to get out of those things. But what God will do when he wants something answered in the earth, he'll lay the burden on somebody. He'll lay it on somebody's heart to pray it through. It might not even be their concern or their burden, but your face will show up right in the midst of their prayer room. Right in the midst of them on their way to work. Your face will show up right on the middle of the screen of the car. And all of a sudden, God will give them a burden. And before you know it, their eyes are filled with tears. And before you know it, they're interceding and carrying a burden. And all they're saying is, help God. Send help right now. Send help in the hurry. Open the doors. Say to the Lord, God rebuke you. Beat back the forces of adversity right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Sometimes you hear the old saints say, Loose your old devil. The blood of Jesus is against you. The power of God stands against you. Saints of God, God will use a power called intercessory to bring heaven's answer in the earth for humanity. What happened was, while this was going on in the temple, there was a little woman by the name of Hannah who only wanted a son. That's all. Everybody else were having babies and she, all she wanted was a son. 
She just wanted God to bless her with a child and, and, and to take away the excursion. Have you ever been so embarrassed among the saints or among the believers because it looked like God was blessing them more than he was blessing you? Well, Hannah was having that same kind of a problem. Here she is in the land with her husband and his other wife and the other wife was having babies every year and Hannah was having none. Her womb was buried and her womb wasn't barren just for a year but for many years and every time they went up yearly to the sacrifice this woman would get a portion for her and all of her children to sacrifice and give thanksgiving to the Lord while Hannah was given a portion out of kindness and out of mercy for her husband but not because she had birthed any seed in the earth do you know how it feels to be given a gift and the gift just feels like a token of appreciation but really not because you did anything not because you accomplished anything do you know how she felt at that particular time well let me tell you what was going on because of the Hammurabian law that seemed to be ruling at that particular time it meant at that time that women didn't have a lot to say they they couldn't have any voice or they didn't have any voting power they could not vote or they couldn't say what well, this is going to be my life they couldn't make choices for their life there was a time in history, can you imagine, when women were just considered chattel, when they were considered just a piece of property, and men bought them and utilized them for servants and for uh, procreation, uh, uh, not sometimes at the woman's will. Was she chosen or selected to be married? She married because it was pre-set up and pre-designed. It was contractual that when you grow up, you're just going to marry him. Him. It wasn't do you love him? Do you like him? Do you want to be with him? She was considered chattel like his cattle, his dog, his sheep, his lambs. She was property to be owned, to be utilized any way he seemed fit. Somebody that's born in 1990 say amen. Thank God for emancipation and liberation. Thank God for salvation. Come on, shout hallelujah. But Hannah at this particular time didn't have a lot of voice but her heart was full of sorrow. All women at this day and age begin to, uh, uh, were subject to these laws. Uh, this is the reason why we see in the book of Exodus that Moses permitted divorce because the men were killing the wives and burying them in the back and burying them in tent yards and getting rid of them instead of letting them go home to their fathers. Now if a woman did not bear a child under this particular law then they would send them back to their father's house but they went back to their father's house in shame they went back in remorse they went back as a uh, 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 rejected property because they were uh, uh, misfits and they were malfunction and they were people who were the dejected in society so when you look at this and you see Hannah praying for a son and and sometimes when you see the situation with Leah and Rachel then you have to understand the customs and the law of that time these women were embarrassed and shamed to be considered in their society as underlings or people who were not uh, fully blessed by the hand of God because their wound made them citizens acceptable if the wound did not produce then they were not citizens of acceptability they were abnormal they were called freaks they were mishaps of nature you see them saying they were to produce and not only produce female children they had to have an heir they had to have a son well Hannah is grieved and burdened and the way God does a thing can you imagine that all of your steps are ordered by the Lord can you imagine that your fiery furnace has been ordered by 
the Lord. Can you imagine God orders the valley and the shadow of death? Can you imagine every test and trial you go through has already been ordered by the Lord? You say, well now God only gives good things. That's not true. Yeah, the goodness of the Lord bringeth us to repentance, but God never promised us only good things. No, no, no ma'am. He promised that when he'd come back, he'd have a church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. What God did promise, that you were going to be fine gold when he finished. That every impurity was going to be burnt out of you one way or another that when you came forth you were going to come forth as pure gold now that God promised he promised to remove help you get moved every spot every wrinkle every blemish any such thing so that when you looked at yourself you were going to be able to say I don't know how it all got done but thank God it got done anyway shut hallelujah somebody shout glory saints of God this woman through the trial of her affliction and the shame in her status in society had dropped she'd been married for years and still doesn't have a child the jealousy the rivalry between women and you know how catty women can be when it looks like they on the up and sister girl is on the low uh, you know the pride of women you know ladies what goes on when it looks like something wrong with her but God is favoring you huh well then you see this woman going through her struggles God uses her misfortune so that she can pray so that she can bring in the next level and the next spiritual move oftentimes when we are being suppressed socially oftentimes God has set us up for the next spiritual move come on here that's the reason you see according to the gospel how it says the last shall be first and the first shall be last oftentimes we praise the one who's first in line first to receive first to get first to achieve first in the road first honey watch it baby because there's something happening about the last the magic is with the last so we're looking here we're seeing her struggle and it looks like all of these last babies are determined changed babies do you remember that last baby that Rachel had you remember her baby before that last baby those babies were earth shakers when you talk about Joseph you talking about something special when you talk about this baby you talk about something special about to happen if it takes years in the making it's because it's a year and months and weeks and days of tears that brought this baby into existence this child that's coming on the scene is not spiritual Spiritually normal. His call was before the foundation of the world. You just didn't pop up saved. You just didn't pop in saved. You were planned to be saved before you knew who God was. God knew who you were and handpicked you and I to be his children. Somebody shout thank you Jesus. Jesus. Hannah thinks her plight is horrifying. Hannah thinks her lack is distasteful. Hannah's backed up 
feeling all rejected, dejected, suppressed, walked on, left out, looked over, passed by. But she doesn't know the scheme in the heavens. Sometimes you just don't know God's mind about a thing. That's why he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far my thoughts and my ways are from your ways. Investigate sometimes. Why does it look like I never get anything? I got to wait a million years for everything to happen. It's because it's a thing in the spirit that's called these old Samuel children. These are generational, dispensational, changed children. I know most of you think you belong to Joshua's generation, but there's a new move on the scene. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And you got to hear what the Lord has to say to the church. Well, here Hannah is praying and she's all disturbed about her social malfunction in the way she looks in public. Her prayers are fueled by the speculation of what men think about her. I want you to know most of us pray according to the way we are perceived by our peers. God help me. They're laughing at me. They are mocking me. They are making fun of me. They do not approve of me. What God needs to bring in this next move is someone who is willing to divorce what people think about them and allow God to do what he wills. Sister, oh sister, you got to understand something is going wrong in the heavens when everybody's fighting for your womb. Notice here, according to Genesis chapter number three, when we see the messianic line coming through the fall of Adam and Eve, sisters and brothers, why do you think God, this war is going on? This war is not about black and white, and the war is not about male and female. The war is woman and Satan. I want you to understand something. This is a high thing. Uh, what's going on? God set the woman's womb uh, against anything Satan can produce. Uh, God said what comes out of her womb uh, is going to stomp all over your head. Uh, shout hallelujah. Shout glory. That's the reason for the fight. Uh, the Fight is everything that comes out of her womb. Uh, this is why women get upset about their sons, uh, get upset about their daughters. Uh, where sometimes daddy can go to sleep, uh, she's still rocking and pacing, uh, cause she know where the real battle is. Uh, this war is between me and this devil, uh, and I'm not gonna let him have my family, uh, and I'm not gonna let him have my children. Now, this war uh, is not a thing in the earth, but uh, a war in the supernatural. Uh, that's where you get the daughters of Rizba uh, that fight over their sons. Uh, I don't care what has been legislated. Uh, notice there's legislation concerning your womb. Uh, what you can have in it and what you can't have in it. Uh, how long you can stay pregnant and how long you can't stay pregnant. Uh, the war is over your womb. That devil uh, wants to stop the matrix of your womb. Uh, why? Because kings and princes uh, and kingdoms come out of your womb. Uh, it's something about a woman 
uh, when she's pregnant, uh, she'll lay hands on that belly. Uh, she'll sing to that child. Uh, she'll prophesy and say, honey, uh, you going to be great in the Lord. Uh, she'll anoint. It's expensive to get. Uh, say yeah. Advisor. And he listen. Warriors, warriors against the kingdom of darkness, and she's already seated in the nature of that child. You can't get drunk, and you can't be a dope addict, you can't be a pimp, and you can't be a liar, and you're not going to be faithless and unbelieving. You're going to be God's man, God's woman. Every time God wanted to get something done in the earth, it depended on what came out of the womb. So now we got this woman laboring, laboring on the altar. And I don't know what it is about women and their association with birthing. Uh, that in accessory uh, and seems to be a situation they're not afraid of. Uh, it's almost as if they can get drunk in in accessory. Uh, they seem to make up their mind, I'm going to call on him uh, until he answers me. Uh, I'm going to pray until God does something. Uh, I'm going to wait before him. Uh, that's the woman of importunity. Uh, in the book of Luke, the woman uh, of the Syrophoenician at his feet. Uh, the woman uh, that sat around the well. The woman uh, that walked through the streets saying, uh, Can't you do something for my son? The woman uh, that ran to the graveside of Lazarus. The woman. Uh, saints of God there's something uh, that happens to women uh, when they get their mind made up uh, that there is somewhere else uh, that I can go I don't have to accept this uh, I don't have to believe this uh, I do not have to be defeated uh, that's the why uh, and the win of the attitude uh, of women in this day and age oh yeah what the spirit has to say to the church you get those daughters of Zelophehad who get upset and say just because my daddy didn't have a son does that mean I have no inheritance oh no we not going out like that I know that God is able uh, to supply my every need uh, and we work the farms and we till the crops and we brought in the sheep and we fed the goats and the oxen and you gonna give away our inheritance uh, because my daddy didn't have a son no ma'am no sir uh, I'm just as important to God as a son uh, shout hallelujah Shout glory! Put your hands together and give God praise. Sisters and brothers, Hannah doesn't understand that where she is, God has her hooked up in divine movement. The change on the earth has been birthed in the heavens. God needed an empty womb. An empty womb that was sanctified for years. Empty. An empty place that when it was filled, it would be filled with the seed that God needed to be birthed into the new realm and the new movement now watch the womb in her has been empty for years and this time when she goes up she tells her husband I'm not eating I'm not gonna eat no more I'm gonna get an answer from God I'm not 
taking this sitting down. Mm. I'm not going to settle like this. He said, woman, eat, eat, eat. Eat, just be satisfied with everything going to be all. No, no, no. I settle with mediocrity. Be, be satisfied with lukewarm. And be satisfied. I better to you than ten sons. Mm. And, and what she did was said no because she kept on not eating. And then she was led in her heaviness of spirit. God's got her right where he wants her now. Years of barrenness. Years of being mocked at, laughed at. Her prayer has changed a little now. Because when you see her now, she's not just saying, give me a son. The interpretation of her prayer is different. If you give me a child, I'll give it back to you. God didn't just want to give her a son so that she could wipe out her reproach. But he wanted to ask for a special kind of son. Give me a son and watch me give him back to you. Now while she's praying, weaving at the altar, watch. The spiritual decadence and immorality of the house is so high until the man of God cannot even discern. He cannot discern the sincerity of a woman, but has discerned that she is drunk and that she is vile. Spiritual depravity can go so high in the house of God until men and women of God who are in leadership cannot discern the move of God. God can be moving and they not be able to discern. But I want you to know something as she said no sir I'm not drunk God granted this woman her petition she came back the next year pregnant but stayed away five more years winged a son and uh, his name was called Samuel L uh, Samuel L means the name of God it means his name is God Samuel his name is God when she brought him back she kept her promise to God and God kept his promise to her and here we got around about three feet high with feet about that big with little sandals about this big and a little e far coat a linen coat coming up the hill and his name is Samuel right in the mix of all this decadence and immorality we got the name of God growing right there in the house his mother left him off there and every year his name is God is growing the coats getting bigger and the feet are stretching longer and this weight is getting heavier cause the name of God is growing in the house every year faithfully his mother brings in a coat and keeps him says Samuel how's everything baby it's time mommy uh, how's it going? It's fine, mommy. Uh, uh, what they tell you to do now? I can close the doors now. Mm. Uh, he's learning uh, how to keep the incense altar burning. Uh, how to keep the lamp filled with oil. Uh, how 
to step up on the breeze and leave her and look down in there. You know he had some things and he saw some things but uh, he had no voice cause the name of God is growing. Israel keeps on weeping and praying. How long you gonna take to deal with this? How long it's gonna be when we keep on losing our blessings? But what they could not see that God had already planned it and ants right in the house growing in the middle of a mess walking right beside Eli was God's answer often times you feel like your answer is not there but it's just in a little robe and a little bitty feet and got a little bitty ephod on but in the fullness of time God is going to change leadership and replace it at the right time uh, but I want you to hear something uh, saints have been crying how long uh, in 1990 uh, how long we're going to put up with this foolishness uh, how long before God really touched somebody uh, how long before uh, God really liberates the church well uh, there's Samuel is growing uh, He's growing in the house. Uh, hear, hear, hear what the Lord said. Uh, sisters and brothers in prayer. Uh, God said, let them know. Uh, my answer is already growing. Uh, don't you see change taking place? Uh, all over the body of Christ. Uh, there's a change taking place. Uh, there's a change taking place in place uh, all over the body of Christ uh, a change is taking place uh, people are weeping and crying uh, if I can't get bread here uh, then I'm going there if I can't be healed here then I'm going there shout hallelujah Samuel is growing God here I want you to hear something God told me uh, to share with this to you um, he said there's a change that he has sent in the land uh, Samuel is growing uh, it's a new form of move of God uh, he's growing to take over notice Samuel uh, is an identified move uh, it is the first time uh, you have the typology of Christ in the priest when they are in position to possess it's the first time you have not just a priest but a priest and a prophet and a judge hallelujah there's a spiritual move breaking out churches are getting together denominational lines God has plucked asunder people are stepping across their religiosity uh, and saying I'd rather have Jesus uh, don't give me no more free Hail Mary's uh, full of grace and uh, pray for us sinners no no uh, I'd rather have Jesus uh, I don't want to see your bulletin no more uh, three songs then a sermon uh, then an offering I uh, rather have Jesus they don't want to hear no more how you got seven steps of grace and three steps of sanctification and then nine weeks of soul winning class and six weeks of new saints class and 18 weeks before you are meant that I'd rather have Jesus saints of God he's tearing down 
a lot of formalism. God said, tell them and tell them for me. This is Samuel's time where he's going to judge and be priest and prophet in his house. Uh, tell them uh, the spirit is growing across the land on purpose uh, I prophesy to you God's will uh, in this next move uh, Samuel is growing uh, and that's the reason you get a Bishop Jakes uh, that's the reason you get uh, an Azusa like a Carlton Pearson uh, that's the reason why you you get a Paul Morton uh, at this time uh, God is moving to pull in a new move uh, sisters and brothers and then God said uh, now warn them for me uh, tell them uh, they must go further uh, than their fathers uh, you can't settle uh, for what has already been done You've got to go further. I asked God, what do you mean by that? He said, now listen. The last regime, they had their bishops and archbishops and had all of the things, the formality. But they refused to obey my word. It was that their practice became God. They obeyed man rather than God. Now they wouldn't do some things because it wouldn't set well with the men folk. Wouldn't set well with the bishop folk. God said, tell them, no, no, no. This is a new move now. I'm in charge. Not the bishop board. Not the ecclesia. I'm in charge. Watch here and watch closely. Now watch it. If this new breakout happens and Samuel is growing, should Samuel imitate Eli? No, no, no. He's got to follow God or he'll have the same predicament that Eli has. The church will move into Ichabod. God said, listen here. Watch what we are producing. Now the last movement had problems with women. Oh yeah, they did. A woman could do this. She could sing in the choir she could give her offering uh, she could work at the altar she could cook chicken and bake pies and fan flies but uh, she could not minister uh, that won't happen in this move uh, hallelujah Shah glory give God the praise whoever God said whoever he wants to use whoever he wants to authenticate whoever he ordains is ordained and it's not to be objected or suppressed you cannot use old stuff for a new move some of them moved and they move with lack of knowledge lack of understanding this new move with the elevation of this that and the other and the binding together and the amalgamation and the uniting of churches and pulling together of brethren across this country how can it be effective if they have not called their sisters to the meeting table with them oh no it it won't work, it won't work, it won't work, shout hallelujah, shout glory, put your hands together and give God praise, saints of God, I have problems with this message, because I happen to be female, but I have 
have no problems with just saying God said so. Well, he said also, be careful in this next move. This move on across the country. Because now, people will try to segregate and cut off themselves and brand out territories. Don't demarcate lines of territory. We had that mess already. Don't go over there because they're not as saved as you. And don't fellowship with them because they're not as holy. We done had that mess already. Listen, and we ain't going for it now because we'll walk off and leave you too. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. God said, when growth happens, there are two things. There's a difference between growth and swell. A swell is an infection. It means there's a disease. But when God's given you growth and he has, that means a new order of dispensation is happening. But watch, because Samuel is growing. The thing about Samuel is not one word failed. Not one word that God gave him the prophesied failed. Number two, the people knew that God was with him. Watch here, number three. God blessed him so that he held his status in office in the honor and in the fear of God. You never heard one time Samuel say, I'm sorry. I misjudged. I was misinformed. I misappropriated because God gave him discernment. He could discern the spirit. Discernment ain't no big thing. It's you just know what's the flesh, what's God, and what is the devil. You can say now that's flesh. That's God and that's the devil. But it's needed in movement. Why? Because Judas likes to walk with the anointed. You've got to be careful and make sure this man is prayed for daily. God give him discernment. Help him to see what is flesh, what is the devil, and what is God. Reach over and tap somebody and say, Samuel is growing. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. I wrote down what else the Lord said to be careful of. He said, now tell them also. Tell them for me that the things of the former church were likely done in ignorance and lack of understanding. But the things implicated in this move will not be accepted like they were in times of spiritual darkness. This church is walking into light great light and great enlightening of the Lord and God will not take a token a jot or a tittle of what was mandated in the past as being order and theocracy for this future get the orders from God get the mandate from God get the direction from God get who he wills what he wills and how he wills it to be from God just because it was effective 20 years ago does not make it effective for now when you come into these meetings all across the body of Christ don't expect what you usually normally are accustomed to expecting when you walk in look for God bring God with you Make sure when you throw your hands up that you're looking for God to make a way out of nowhere. Give like you losing your mind. Step into the miraculous. Let God prophesy. Let God judge. And let God be priest in his house. Shout hallelujah. Well now, 
if God doesn't grow in this move effectively sorrowful and with great chagrin I want you to know God will bring another Samuel but I kind of got confidence in this man and in this woman because they have prayer life because they love God because they're willing to lean and depend on God now God also said last but not least two things one the church is not a black church it's not a white church it's not Hispanic or Asian the church is mixed nations all of us have to come together the church is not racist the church is not a bigot ain't no way you can be in this next move and be filled up with bigotry and be filled up with racism the church is not sexist God anoints who he wills he'll use male and female shout hallelujah shout glory put your hands together and give God praise now if we don't let Samuel grow last but not least we'll lose what God is saying what he's growing amongst us now is God's name is growing if you are afraid of who he is and afraid of his characteristics you gonna have problems in this next move sisters and brothers if Samuel don't grow then we miss who God is we miss him as Elohim the creatorial God if Samuel don't grow we miss him as Jehovah the God that is and he is alive we'll miss him as El Shaddai the almighty God able to do all things if Samuel starts growing we'll miss him as the Adonai the Lord the master the creator and controller of all things we'll miss him as Yaira Yira or Jaira God who sees and provides for each and every one of us we'll miss him as Rophi the God that heals sets free delivers casts out infirmities sick folks walk out of here healed if he doesn't grow we miss him as the Nisi and the Imkadish the God that is our banner over all the sacrificer and the one who consecrates us will miss the peace of God Jehovah Shalom somebody say Shalom 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 how often we've needed peace of mind peace in our homes peace on our jobs but he shimmer of God that's here and there and when you get over there he's there before you get there we'll miss him as Rohai and sit canoe a shepherd full of righteousness how many here today are glad Samuel is growing glad there's a new move glad that hope has come glad that deliverance is alive glad that God is fighting our battles glad that God has resurrected our people glad that God has anointed leadership glad that we're going forward glad that we're going onward glad that we're going upward glad that we are the anointed
promise you, I fought this message because I didn't want to be the one to bring it. Said, give me something happy. Give me something to shout about. Let a man preach this message. But I promise you God has spoken to the church. He that hath an ear. He that hath an ear. <laughs> this next move, this Samuel move, his name is God is growing like wildfire all over this country. People's not caring about stuff and things and icons anymore. All they want to know is, where is his name? Where is Jesus? I want to be where he is. Samuel is growing. Saints of God, you and I have the extreme pleasure of being a part and seeing the move. What we want to do is pray for those that God has called into the kingdom for such a time as this. That <clears throat> Eli is never produced again, but that we have Samuel all the days of our lives. Come on, let's shout hallelujah. Let's shout hallelujah. Let's ask God. Come on, shall we pray together? Throw your hands up and let's pray for leadership right now. Whoever God is going to use, whenever, these men and women that are already in place and in position, in God's mind, in the mind of the Spirit, that God will envelop them, give them discernment, and again give them the courage to fulfill His will and not bow to the whims of peer groups and the good old boys club and living above the law and two orders and two lines of orders and oh come on shall we stand together pray for the leaders in your home pray for the leaders in your churches pray for the leaders in your cities Come on, let's pray. Come on, raise your hands up. And God, send the spirit of intercessory on your heart to birth out good leadership where they might take a step to the east, to the right, left, right. Let's pray that God hold them, embrace them, harness them, yoke them, bridle them, in word and in deed. Oh, badada di andalo lo bokosh. Handeli di andalo lo bokosh. Come on, sanctify Zion. When Zion travails, she brings forth. She produces warriors that overthrow the enemy camps out of her womb. Come kings and queens out of her womb. Come deliverers and preachers and teachers out of her womb. Come doctors and lawyers and bishops out of her womb. Comes a high patriarchal, matriarchal system that's laced with theological principles. Come on, pray Zion. Let God hear your prayer. Let God hear it, Pentecostia that we want good leadership and we want him to hold our leaders in safety and hold them and give them the strength and give them knowledge give them divine revelation and give them wisdom and give them understanding every devil that would try every demon that would set up every evil force that be planet come on let's pray that God reveal cast down
down, cast out, break up, tear up. In the name of the Lord Jesus, say on the Lord, rebuke you, rebuke you. The Lord God rebuke you against leadership all across this country, all across this world. We come against your ploys, your tactics, your sakinery, your your mangling and your evil seductions. We come against you. We come against your miranding and your snickering. We come against your cover, your masquerade, your hiding. We rebuke you. We rebuke your seat. We rebuke your place, your setting. We rebuke your snares, your spoiler, your defiler. We rebuke your arrows. We rebuke your restlessness, your worry, your fatigue, your trouble. We rebuke your spirit of faithlessness, discontentment, unthankfulness, your spirit of witchcraft and wizardry. Come on, Zion. If we pray, God can strengthen and lead them and guide them and baptize them and refresh them and renew them. Pray, Zion. Pray. Hallelujah. That the revival break out in their spirit. Revival in the pulpit. Revival in the pulpit. Revive the pulpit here. Revive the preacher. Revive the evangelist. Revive the pastor. Revive the ministry staff. Send the spirit of revival. The spirit of revival. The spirit of true discernment. How to discern flesh. How to discern God. How to discern when it's the devil. And when every mouth sounds like God. How to discern who God is speaking through. Pray saints. Pray. Pray that this move and this generation of Samuel. God's name growing. The name of God being loose. The name of God being matured. The name of God being free in the house. The name of God being in control. It